Hello, this. everyone. Hi, everyone. Hey, everybody. Tony Dorica from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Meredith Good. Bell from uh, Yorktown, Virginia. Eric Schmidt in Cary, North Carolina. Don Farrell, Fresh Revenues in Memphis, Tennessee. Doug Supon, Nashville, Tennessee. Dan Supon, Nashville, Tennessee. Well, Doug, I guess well, it's your show. Take it over. Yeah, we're going to wait a couple minutes here. I just want to make sure everybody has a chance to, um, to log in. So we're going to take a couple moments. I appreciate your patience while we do that. Thank you so much for your, you know, for waiting for us while we have everyone make sure everybody's logging in. Right. Well, you are um, waiting though. If you guys want to, because we like to know who we're talking to. If you want to go ahead and use the chat, put your name in there, maybe where you're from or what pharmacy you're from, that would be great. We'd like to know who who's out there so we know who we're talking to. Well, Doug, it looks like we've got a bunch of people logging in, and and we uh, will just so you're aware, we will be doing. Uh, more of these educational webinars um, in the future as well. We want to make sure that we can bring to you as much much help as we can with your pharmacy. But when your pharmacy grows, we grow, so we want to help you. And uh, just to mention, we'll, we'll be uh, sticking around for a little Q&A after this is done as well. So, Doug, um, you want to tell them how we got to know each other? New Mexico. Hello from New Mexico. Olive Tree Compounding Pharmacy. Dave's Pharmacy. Hello, Nebraska. Thank you so much for stopping in. A couple more moments. I won't, I won't take up too much of your time. We want to make sure we get through this for you. Well, we definitely have some great offers at the end, so make sure you stick around for the whole thing because we do have some really good offers at the, at the end of this for you. <clears throat> TX Scripts experts, hello. Texas. Anywhere else? Take care of pharmacy in New Jersey. New Jersey. Oh, see, this is great. Technology is great. We can all do this from our offices and say hello to everybody everywhere. So are some of these your clients there, Doug? All right, so why don't we get started? Um, couple things um, that we wanted to go over with you first. The first thing I'll tell you is we do plan on doing more of these webinars. So definitely if you if you have LinkedIn account, look us up on LinkedIn, um, Dan, Sup Dan Supon and um, over here, the president of the company, Doug Supon, vice president of the company, look us up on LinkedIn and we you'll see a lot of things happening on LinkedIn from us as well. So we do post a lot of things on there. Also too, I wanted to let you know that we will be doing more of these webinars. So if you go on LinkedIn, we'll, we'll, you'll see when we're gonna actually be planning these webinars for you. Um, we're excited that we have some great expert speakers in the panel. We have four of them. Um, we will introduce you to them very shortly. Um, but in the meantime, we'll go over a couple things. If you haven't, if you don't already know about RX1 Shop, and then uh, we'll, we'll go into uh, our, our guest speakers. All right, um, so for those of you who don't know us already, we actually started out uh, over 10 years ago as LTC Generics. We started out strictly helping just the long-term care pharmacies. Uh, me and my brother, Dan, um, we did that for a while and we saw that we were helping these LTC pharmacies quite a bit, saving them quite a bit of money on their branded generic products. And what we decided to do is help out all pharmacies. Why not? We're helping out the LTC stores. Why not help the retail compounding? Um, we can help out. Um, et cetera, specialty pharmacies. So what we did is we rebranded the company and turned it into RX1 Shop. And we have been RX1 Shop now for how many years now? Uh, about two and a half. So about two and a half years we've been, <laughs> we rebranded in our RX1 Shop. We have hundreds of pharmacies across the whole country that use us. And what we do, we do things a lot different. We take that buying power from all the pharmacies across the country. We go in against about 13 different distributors for you, negotiate the best possible prices on your branded generic products, and bring it back to our easy to use website. So it's all in one location. It makes it easy for our pharmacies to use. They can go right to the our website and have the best prices right there. And then we do the negotiating to get you the best prices there. My brother Dan will actually in a little bit go over a little bit on 
some of the new exciting things that RX One Shop has in store for our pharmacies as well, which he'll go over shortly. Um, but what we have done by bringing everything to our website is making it so it's easier for you to find the best price and not have to do all the shopping around because we know you're busy. As a pharmacist, you're busy. We have friends and family members within the industry that are pharmacists. We have, I have my somebody that was a close to me. It was actually a head pharmacist, just retired actually. Um, but we understand what you're going through. You guys work hard. It's not just filling the scripts, which is saving people's and helping people's lives. You're also doing things like having to juggle and stay profitable, having to make sure you're getting the right medication for the right price for your reimbursement, things like that. We want to take some of that load off. That's what RX One Shop is here to do. We're going to have everything on our one website. If we cannot provide the service for you, we are going to find out the people that can, and we're going to actually put links on our website for that for you. So after we negotiate the best price, we give it to our website. We also give you no contract. Use this how you want. So you use this if you want to use this for one product or 10 products. If you want to use this every day, we have stores that order every day, some that order once once every week. So use this how you want. That's what we're there for. Uh, we do have free next day delivery on, on your orders. That's something we negotiated as well with our distributors. So that's that's the things that RS1 Shop is doing for you that's you know a lot different. We will hand touch every order that comes in. Your client is our client. If you order from us, you're expecting to get it tomorrow. If there's something out of stock, you're gonna get a call from me or Dan. You're gonna also get an email so you know that there's a problem so you can have a chance to get it so your client gets it the next day, as well as we will, if we find it cheaper, we will actually let you know it's a different, if it's a different NDC, we'll let you know and we'll actually get it to you cheaper if you say it's okay. So we are doing a lot of things on our end to make sure that we're helping you and your pharmacy be profitable. Um, I'm gonna actually turn it over a little bit to, to Dan now so he can go over a couple of things on what we're, we're some exciting news that we're looking to expand into as well. Hi everyone, uh, thanks again for uh, taking the time out to listen to us. Um, again, like uh, my brother Doug said, uh, my name is Dan Supon, I'm the president of RX One Shop. Um, just wanted to go a little bit more into detail on some things. Um, for instance, the website, uh, we actually spent uh, about a year working on the new website. We worked hand in hand actually with pharmacists to make sure that all the information that was showing up on the website was the information that you guys would be looking for. And um, we tried to make it as simple to use as possible. We wanted it to feel like you were going on to eBay or Amazon to order clothes or furniture, but you're actually obviously on there ordering brand and generic pharmaceuticals. So it's as easy to use as we possibly could make it. Um, also, some things that we're growing into, um, we're expanding as far as what we can do and what we can provide for your pharmacy. And we're doing that by we're going to carry front end merchandise for your pharmacy. So we're going to carry things as little as stuffed animals for the front end of your pharmacy and things like that. We're also going to be start be, we're going to be carrying diabetic supplies. We're going to be carrying all of your medical supplies. We, we literally want to make it so anything that you need for your pharmacy. Uh, yeah, like one stop shop. Exactly. That's what we're trying to make it so it's super easy for you and you're not having to hunt all over the internet for things or call 16 different distributors or suppliers. You're going to be able to come to one place. And even if we don't have the product, we have a resource on our website for you to get the product or to get the help. That's what we want to do for you. Um, so Exactly. I, I agree completely. Um, anything that you can think of that you need for your pharmacy, we'll be able to supply you with that product. Um, that's just some of the things that we're, we're moving on to uh, with the website. Also, um, like Doug had said, we, we do work with 13 different suppliers, but we know that if, if we started shipping you products from 13 different suppliers, that can probably be more of a headache than it is good. We work with that many suppliers to make sure that we're bringing you the best product and the best prices, but we only put a handful of those suppliers up on the website for you to order from. And we do that so, A, we can give more product and more business to those five suppliers that we're using on the website, which in turn, if we're giving them more business, we can negotiate a better price from those suppliers. More buying power. And then also, you won't have to worry about paying an invoice for 13 different suppliers because we only select the best five that we work with, you're never going to receive an invoice from all 13 of them. Um, so that makes that part easier for you as well. Um, and stuff, things like that, that we do with those suppliers, it, it just, it, it gives us more negotiation with those suppliers. And literally we're on the phone with the owners of the suppliers that we work with on a daily basis, pushing them to make sure that the prices that we're offering you today is the absolute lowest that we can get on those products today. Um, that's basically, I mean, 
RX One Shop, we've been around, like I said, for years. We've been in, we've been around the industry for years. Uh, my brother Dan has done it before. We even got into LTC generics. He was in it for years before that. Uh, family members within the industry, we, we feel your pain. We know what you go through every day. You have a love and a passion for your job. That's why you do it. It's it's a hard job. It's 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 brutal sometimes, and we appreciate what you guys do. Um, we also um, wanted to. Um, let you know that we are going to do a special offer for new members joining in with RX One Shop today. Um, and I'll let uh, the president tell you about that. Exactly. What we're going to do is if, if you sign up with RX One Shop, which again is very easy to do, um, you, can, you can write, yeah, and free. And uh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much like you're joining a buying group, but without having to pay anything for, for using us. Um, but the promotion we're going to offer for, for everybody today is if you mention the webinar in an email and sign up with RX One Shop, and place a thousand dollar order, uh, mix and max, brand and generic, things like that. Um, we will send you a hundred dollar Visa or Master gift card. And it's uh, it's just a thank you. It's a thank you for for trusting us that we we will be able to help you, and and we will. Um, we like I said, we've been doing it for many years. We have a lot of pharmacies that will vouch for us and say that that we do great for them. We save them a lot of money. I saved a pharmacy three days ago that put in a new order. I saved them eleven hundred dollars on one order. So um, we, we, we have the pricing there, and we, we make sure we, we get you everything that you're looking for. Um, but what I'd like to do um, is obviously now you know a little bit about our one shop and what we're here for. I would love to introduce you to uh, Tony DeRico. Um, Tony, I actually met at the NCPA in, in uh, 2017 this year in Florida. Um, he's, a, he's a gentleman. I use that term loosely a little bit, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, he actually – here's what I like about Tony. Tony – me and him have the same views. We, If our members are happy, we're happy. And that's what we strive for. If we can make it so everybody on the other end using our services are happy, then we're going to be in good in good standing as well. So that's our, that's what we shoot for. So I'm going to let uh, Tony take it away here because um, this is what you guys came for. Thank you, Doug. Very good uh, introduction. I love the fact that what you guys do to help your clients. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to take a second and introduce the team that I brought together to work with you and tell you a little bit about myself. I've been in the pharmacy industry as far as a consultant since 2010, worked with hundreds of cons uh, pharmacies across the country. But I'll tell you more during my time during the demonstration. So the experts we have today is we got Eric Schmidt, who's gonna talk to you about social media with a focus on Facebook marketing, how to make more money. I'm gonna talk to you about how to hire employees with the best attitude, Meredith Bell, who is gonna to talk to you about now that you have the right employees, how do you train them? How do you get them to do and act the way that you want them to? And then Don Farrell is gonna pick up, he's batting uh, cleanup. He's gonna tell you how to improve your sales process, how to train salespeople, how to train customer service. So that's what I'm gonna do. And at this point, I'm gonna turn it over to Eric and he will start to talk to you how to make some money. Thank you very much, Tony. And uh, I appreciate uh, everybody being here this afternoon. Uh, my name's Eric Schmidt. I'm your expert today in social media. Uh, I've been in the world of marketing for over 20 years. And before that, I had a career in retail. Right now, the world is changing around us at a faster pace than at any point in history. And what that means is that there's a real opportunity to take business from your competitors that aren't willing to adapt. Uh, I bet most of you have heard of Circuit City. Well, that's the company that I worked for when I was in retail. They were still building and growing back then in the late 80s and 90s. At that time, we had fewer than 200 stores when I worked there. The company grew fast, and at their peak, they had over 1,500 stores. When they declared bankruptcy in 2008, they had revenue of over 12 billion, yes, that's billion with a B, billion dollars a year, and yet they just disappeared. What it proves is that no one is exempt from change. There are a lot of people that claim to be experts in the world of social media, and that may be, but they haven't figured out how to make their clients money. And that's what I do. So when I say expert in social media, I don't mean expert in posting pictures of my lunch. So now let's talk about how to make money on social media. First, let me tell you that almost none of your peers are making money on social media. I bet there isn't more than one person attending this webinar making money on social media right now. If you are making money, and I mean real revenue, type yes, I'm making money online in the chat box. I wanna see if we get any, any responses here. 
All right, either we're not going to get any responses or you guys are typing really slowly. So let's move, we'll keep moving. So right now your customers are uh, are telling you that um, they saw your po um, post and something like that. Well, that doesn't really count as making money. That's just more, well, it's, it's kind of nice to hear that somebody saw it, but it's really more ego massaging than it is anything else. So let's talk about the portion where we're really going to be able to make money. Uh, so the first question is, what social media should you be using? And the simple reality is that you can't do it all. There's just playing too many social networks. So take a look at the chart and uh, you'll see the most popular sites. And uh, <clears throat> here's what I suggest. Select the top two that your customers use. And it's easy to find out what those are. Ask your customers when they're doing business with you. What's the social network that you use most? And then what's your second favorite? So as you can see by looking at, at uh, the chart here, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram are the top three and by a pretty wide margin. So next, you're gonna need to have an objective for the platforms that you've decided to promote yourself on. If you don't know what you want to accomplish, how are you gonna know what success, or for that matter, a failure looks like? So on face Facebook, it might be social engagement. You might be selling a product. Uh, you might be trying to entertain people a little bit. You might be trying to drive website traffic. Now YouTube, and this is part of the key to successful social media, um, use of successful of social media successfully is um, understanding that each one is different and you can't do the same thing in, in every place and expect it to be successful. So uh, for instance, on YouTube, you might use uh, how-to videos. You might do uh, image advertising that appears be before people watch a video. Instagram, you might be entertaining. You might be building image. All right, so now you're going to have to remember why it is that your customers are on the platform. And bad news, it isn't to see your advertising. It's to see what their friends are doing. It's to keep up with family. It's to see cat videos. It's to see the guy on the skateboard getting his testicles crushed as he falls on a railing. So you're going to get attention by either being really entertaining or making an offer that makes people say, holy stool softener, Batman, I need to take advantage of that. Remember, I'm here to make you money, not stroke your ego. Being really creative requires time to be creative and money to execute your idea. You might be able to come up with one cool idea, but if you aren't in the business every day, it gets hard in a hurry and expensive. Believe me, I know. So that means that you better come up with a discount that makes people notice. That might be, say, 50% off anything in the store, except, of course, actual pharmaceuticals. Is that going to get you noticed? Say yes in the chat if you think so. So you're going to get noticed, uh, but right now you're thinking, hey, that's a bad idea. I'm going to lose money. And in fact, yes, you will. On about 5% of the purchases because they'll buy one thing and leave. But the other 95% of the people, they'll buy three things or four things, or 10 things. And a few of those people are gonna fill an entire shopping basket. And you're gonna get people to come to your store and buy stuff and not just once. Now, here's the part where you start to compound your investment. To get the coupon for 50% off your advertising on Facebook, your new customer has to give us their name and email. Now, we can market to them on an ongoing basis. Announcements about new products, manufacturers, specials, or anything else that's gonna keep people interested. Here comes the part where we get to take business from the big box stores. When flu season comes around, Walmart puts a big sign up in front of the store offering flu shots. So does CVS, Walgreens, and Rite Aid. They've got the foot traffic to make that work. But if those people get an email from you before the signs go up, who gets the flu shot business? And it's an easy sale. Flu shot from your trusted pharmacist? or flu shot from the guy that was dragging carts in from the Walmart parking lot last week. Same thing with other vaccines. How many opportunities for your store are coming to mind right now? All right, let's talk about email. I use social media to get email addresses. Have you ever calculated the, VL, <clears throat> excuse me, the value of an email address to your business? I'll simplify and use a conservative scenario to make the point. Let's say you've gathered an email database of a thousand names. Over the course of a year, you influence 2% of that list, or 20 people, to become regular customers. 
I know my wife spends between $50 and $200 at the drugstore every single month. We'll use the low end of that number, 50 bucks. We multiply that by 12 to come up with $600. So now we've got 20 customers spending $600 a year. That comes out to $12,000. Your list of 1,000 names generated $12,000 in revenue. So the value of each email is $12. If your cost to acquire each email is $1, is it worth it? The real value is probably much higher because you can influence people to spend a lot more than $50 a month. So that all seems pretty simple, right? So how come everybody isn't doing it? Any guesses? Bueller? Bueller? I'll tell you why. They're waiting to get the Sunday paper so they can look for their Circuit City Circular. Now think for a minute, are you the pharmacist that's waiting for the Sunday paper, or are you the pharmacist that's growing their email list every week? Anybody heard of PillPack.com yet? They're running national television commercials to convince people that they should fill their prescriptions online. These aren't the weasels of, re of recent years hawking Viagra online. These are venture capital-backed businesses that want to go public. If you don't have a strategy to communicate with your existing customers and potential new customers on an ongoing basis, someone else will. Social media is the best and most cost-effective opportunity that you're going to have to build those relationships. So on Friday, and we're talking today is Thursday, so this was last Friday, I started running a Facebook campaign for a client in the health space. In the first four days, they got 29 leads. Half of those leads are going to do business. The first transactions will total about $900 in revenue. We spent $122.31 on ads. Are you starting to get the idea of how this works? Two of those people that do business will become contract clients, spending $1,000 a year. So that's almost $3,000 in revenue, but we've still spent only $122. Several more of those people will do business on an occasional basis, spurred by the emails that they're going to receive in the future. And this business has a high rate of referrals from satisfied clients. So think about how much additional revenue that potentially is. Businesses have trouble making money on social media because they haven't learned how to appeal to their customers. And I can understand why, because there's a ton of just plain really bad advice being dished out. So thank you for listening. I hope I was able to bring some value to everybody that was uh, here. Um, Dan, Doug, thank you. Um, these guys are, are great hosts for this webinar. I've got uh, two offers. These are exclusive offers for the RX One Shop webinar. Um, the first is going to be a turnkey Facebook campaign, and uh, that's $4.95. That includes everything, the planning, creative, um, landing page, we use uh, several different pieces of software so that we can uh, track everything. Uh, the email collection and the ad spend. So that's a turnkey proposition right there. The second offer is a social media opportunity assessment. I'll review your social media strategy and spend an hour with you outlining your best opportunities to grow your business. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Tony. Tony? Thanks, Eric. Great job. <clears throat> As you see, Eric's got a wealth of knowledge on uh, social media marketing, and he's provided you an offer, which if uh, for all you attendees here and people have registered, there are going to be given, we're going to be giving away $2,687 worth of free products and services. So I'm going to talk about hiring employees. So if you, if you get a second, think about as you're sitting here on the webinar, your employees back at your pharmacy, do you have eagles or do you have turkeys? Put it in the chat box <clears throat> right now. Do they look like the young ladies on the left, the guy at the far right, or in the middle? They tell you what you want to hear, but in behind your back, they're laughing. So in the chat box, say I've got eagles or I got turkeys. Love to know. So one of the most frustrating things of running a business is dealing with employees who have bad attitudes. I'm sure none of you have those type of employees, but some people do. And to show with you some of the <clears throat> clients that we worked with, Steve Hoffarth is in Magnolia, Texas, which is a suburb of Houston. And he runs a single store and he does double the national average in revenue. And he's been using our services, gosh, for seven years. 
Michael Palmer is in uh, Missouri, <clears throat> has five stores equally. We've been working with him for, uh, for seven years. And Don Grove, Don Grove is a legend in the pharmacy industry. Uh, he writes a lot of articles. <clears throat> he created something called Smart Flow. He's re-engineered the inside of pharmacy, whereby, again, he's doing double the national average. More importantly with me, when he became a client five years ago, after about two or three months using our personality testing, that's the service, our premier product. We measure the 24 personality characteristics that drives one's behavior and attitude. And so Don calls me and says, Tony, you saved me, <clears throat> excuse me, you saved me $50,000. I forget if it was 50 or 60, but it was in that range. And I said, great, Don, what did I do for you? He said, well, I was going to hire a pharmacist. And I wasn't going to use your service. You know, I knew the guy. I thought he's a good guy. But I said, you know, I made a commitment to you that I was going to use your personality testing services. So I had two of the finalists that I was thinking hiring take the assessment. Boy, am I glad I didn't hire that first guy. He really scored poorly. And I know in three to six months, I would have probably had to fire him. And he probably would have cost me fifty or $60,000. So that's the type of work we do and do for hundreds and hundreds of pharmacy owners. So I asked Steve a few years ago, I said, Steve, what's important to you as a pharmacist? Matter of fact, I spoke at the PCCA a few years ago, and I wanted to sound like I knew what a pharmacist want. And he said, you know what? Here are the five things. As a pharmacist, I want to increase my sales and profits. That makes sense. So the second one surprised me. This one took me by surprise. I said, I want more personal time. I don't want to be a slave to my business anymore. And I said, Steve, why are you a slave? He said, because I can't trust my employees. I can't leave them alone. When I'm, when I'm not away, they don't function like I want them to function. And then he said he'd like to reduce the hassle of running the pharmacy. Definitely wants to improve customer satisfaction. And more importantly, overall, he wants to maximize the performance of all of his assets. How many of you out there would like to do the same thing? If you'd like to increase the performance of your pharmacy, type in yes in the chat box. Let us know that we can help you. So it's football season, and no offense to everybody who hates the New England Patriots. They do happen to have a couple few good players, and they have a few good coaches. But I love the Bill Belichick quote, right? If you hire the wrong people, all the fancy management ain't going to bail you out. So that's why personality testing is critical. As a matter of fact, the last research that I read, they studied 20,000 employees. And in those 20,000, 89% of the people that failed on their job, it wasn't because they didn't know how to do the job. It's because they had a bad attitude or a bad match for the need from a personality point of view. Think about it. Do your employees, are they happy, friendly people, or are they sometimes grumpy? Are your employees ambitious? Do they want to work? Do they want to exceed expectations? Or are they just showing up, collecting a paycheck? Do your employees show up 15 minutes early, ready to work, and do they work their butt off? Those are the type of employees that we help our customers hire, train, and manage. A little bit of background on the assessment company that our system is designed from, designed up. It's called Winslow Research. A little history. The company started in 1968 and initially was predominantly an athletic firm. And on the screen, you'll see some of the uh, companies and industries or sports areas that the companies worked in. Probably the most notable thing that you might have seen is the movie Miracle on Ice, where the 1980 U.S. Olympic hockey team, a bunch of college kids, beat the pants off the Russians in the semifinals and then won the gold. If you see the movie, it usually runs this time of year. It's a good feel movie. You'll see these kids being asked to take a test and one kid throwing it in the garbage. That is the Winslow Athletic Assessment System. And that's the foundation by which the, the assessment system that we'll be providing you is developed from. And also, you're probably familiar with some of the more famous personal development coaches such as Robert Kiyosaki, you know, he's the rich dad, poor dad guy. Uh, Jack Canfield, Super the Souls, Dennis Whaley, Psychology of Winning. 
By the way, Dennis is our lead author. He's the gentleman that worked with the 16 Olympic teams. And they will tell you that, for example, in athletics, the number one personality characteristic for success is self-confidence. So that's what we do. We'll be providing you 24 traits, and we will guarantee you the results. Now, a couple free tips. Because often people say, geez, Tony, it's great that we can measure what we when we have an applicant, but how do we get better applicants? You know, I used to be in the hotel business. I compete against Marriott. Everybody wanted to work for Marriott. Not everybody wanted to work for Choice Hotels. That's just a fact. So here's a tip. I suspect you as an owner have a business card. How many of your employees have business cards? Why don't they all have business cards? Can you imagine for $10 a kind of self-confidence and the morale building? Give them a business card. Have their name on it. They'll share it with friends and family. You actually get more business. On the back of it, put in a special offer. Whatever you want to do. You know, something in the front end. If you want to give a discount, convert a you know, a script from Walmart to your pharmacy, give them something. More importantly, advise all your staff, and you need to do this particularly as the owner. When you experience good service, it doesn't matter if it's Subway, Macy's, Dillard's, wherever you're going. If you see somebody that gives absolutely great service to you, here's what I would say. I'd give them my card, say, my name is Tony. I own the Dorico Pharmacy in town, and I am so impressed with the service you gave us that I know birds of a feather flock together, and I'm sure your friends are like you, friendly, hardworking. If any of those people are looking for a job, I'm always looking for eagles. Here's my card. Have them call me, and I'll set up an interview. What have you just done? Number one, you're going to get calls from their friends. More importantly, that person that gave you that great service, they may call you, and you did not ask them to do that. Trick number one. So that's what I would say. When you experience it, hire, or at least connect with them, and they can introduce you to people like that. Then you come in and develop it. Think about this. How do you develop a, phar a pharmacy Super Bowl winning team? I suspect Virtually everybody here has seen the Kentucky Derby. Best horses ever to run, whatever the heck the distance is. All right. Have you ever seen a, a horse win the Kentucky Derby without a jockey? Think about that. Would a horse ever win without a jockey? Absolutely not. Your employees are the horses. You're the jockey. You've got to train them, you've got to coach them, and you've got to manage them to expectations. That's your job in leading the team as the head coach. You're the Bill Belichick for your team. So finally, let me tell you what part of my contribution to the $2,687 is. For everybody on the line today, whether you buy our services or not, we will provide you a Winslow w website which normally we charge $195. And I'll give you two free assessments that you can use on two of your employees. That is free no matter what you do today. On top of that though, I know my, I look at my checking account once in a while and my savings account, I'm getting like 1% interest. So it's not a really good investment. What we will do is we will provide you a special offer for participants today. Total rounds up to 1200 bucks. We will give you 50% off. Boy, I wish I could make that on my cash in the bank. So that's what we're going to do. Now I'm going to turn it, off, turn it over to Meredith Bell, and she's going to tell you, now that you hired the Eagles, how to train. Thank you, Tony. And thanks again, too, to Doug and Dan for hosting this event. I'm excited to be here with you. We are a global software company, and our tools help managers and employees become star performers. So, of course, I believe that investing in the development of your team is one of the smartest things you can do. But I will admit there's a problem. Experts estimate that between 70 and 90% of all the money spent on training is wasted because participants don't apply what they learned back on the job. The true test after the training 
is what do people actually do when they're in a situation where they have to use the skill? Here's what usually happens. They don't have time to think about what they learned. They only have time to react. And because their old habits are deeply ingrained, they're likely to respond with their typical way of doing things, what feels comfortable and familiar. So when you introduce them to a different approach, they have to make that new way stronger than the old one. So think about what you go through yourself when you're trying to improve a skill that you've got, whether it's how to improve the way you play a sport or how you listen to a customer. You've got to put in a lot of practice so the new way of performing the skill becomes automatic. It's awkward at first because your brain is literally wired for the way you've been doing it. And your employees are no different when you want them to learn a new skill. You'll need to give them the chance to practice the skill many times and they'll need coaching along the way. Now, the good news is you don't have to be certified to be an effective coach. The key is to ask questions, especially if someone has made a mistake and you want them to learn from it so they don't repeat it the next time they're in a similar situation. Here are a series of questions you could ask, and I recommend that you write these down because they really do work like magic. Uh, let me run through them real quick. You don't have to ask them precisely the way I've got them worded here, but let me just tell you what the gist of it is. So number one, you get them to talk about what happened, the specific sequence of events, and then how they felt about it so you can you know, discover what their emotions are at this moment. And then the second one is talking about why it happened that way. So what were they thinking? You know, What was going on around them that caused them to react the way they did? And then number three, what were the consequences? Did things turn out the way they hoped they would? Were there complaints? You know, what were the outcomes or results? And then fourth, how would they handle a similar situation in the future based on this analysis they've just done in the previous one? So what you're doing is drawing out from them their thinking, their processing, and you can guide them along the way. And then the final one is, what will you do now? asking the person, you know, what next steps will you take so that you make sure you improve in this area? And I would be interested in hearing in the chat if you have any examples of situations in your own store where these questions might be useful to you. And while you're entering in your answers, I want to share with you an example from my own life with my own local pharmacy. This was several years ago. I was in the checkout line and the cashier was talking on the phone and she stayed on the phone the entire time she was checking out and processing my items. She never once looked at me, so she wouldn't have been able to identify me in a lineup if she had, you know, if her life depended on it. And so when I got home, I decided to call the um, owner and describe my experience because as a business owner myself, I thought, I sure would want to know if someone had had an experience with one of my employees like I had just had with such poor service. So the owner thanked me for taking time to call and said he was going to talk to the person. So my question to you is, if a customer were to call you about an incident like this in your store, how would you handle it? What would you do? Um, one thing to think about, if instead of, you know, correcting the employee and reading them the riot act, you could ask some of these questions to help the employee come up with the solution about what they need to do in the future <clears throat> so they're more effective. Well, what if you had a training program that supported this kind of learning over time where you're Team members don't just learn how to perform a skill the right way, but they also have a chance to get the practice and the coaching needed to make it a habit. What if you could help them develop their emotional intelligence, which involves managing their own reactions and behavior, as well as improving their interactions with customers and coworkers? Well, that's exactly what we've built into our e-learning system 
strong for performance. It's not like any other uh, program you've experienced before with online training because your employees aren't spending 20 or 30 minutes a day going through a lot of content at once and then asking, answering knowledge questions. Instead, they spend just a few minutes in the program on a given day getting a specific tip that they can use. Then they apply it back on the job. They get a 12 month subscription and can access it 24 seven from any device. Here's how it works. First, they learn a three step process for practicing a skill on the job. They're going to focus on a, a specific tip that will help them do it better. Then they're going to commit to take action and then ap apply it on the job. Later, they come back into the program to reflect on how it went, answering those same questions that I just showed you a few minutes ago. Then you or another person is going to serve as their accountability coach to support their efforts. And they can create a one minute survey to get feedback as they're working on this from you and other team members about how they're doing. And finally, we've built in content for 64 different topic areas, so you don't have to create any material yourself. These 64 topics are mapped to the 24 Traits in Tony's Winslow Assessment. And listed here are just a few examples. On the left are some of the interpersonal skills, and on the right are some of the inner strengths. And they address, again, both the external and internal aspects of emotional intelligence. I want to share real quick the feedback from a consultant who's used the Strong for Performance system with 100 managers and employees in a hospital system in Texas. He emphasized that the participants use the program regularly because it's quick, easy, and practical. And even more importantly, their manager said it definitely got results. They saw improvements in their performance. So here are three reasons why you want to consider investing in this powerful e-learning system. First of all, you'll be able to acquire and keep more customers because your employees will understand what's needed to treat them like gold, and they will have the skills to be able to do that. Second, you'll retain employees more because when you invest in their development and focus on how they can grow and improve, which is a key thing that especially millennials talk about these days, they feel valued and they'll be more loyal to you. And maybe even more importantly for you, you'll spend less time dealing with people problems. So you can spend more time on the actions that actually grow your business. So as a thank you for investing your time with us today, I'm going to give you a complimentary admin dashboard along with training on how to use it. The dashboard includes a user subscription for the person who's going to serve as the administrator. And I'll be following up with each of you to make arrangements for you to get your dashboard. But in addition, you can buy a starter package of three user subscriptions for $5.95. So this would cover three people who are employed in your store. And that's a 50% off the regular price of $3.95 each. It'll be available for the next 72 hours. And if you decide you'd like to buy additional subscriptions beyond just the starter package to use with more folks in your store, on the shopping cart, you'll find the option to add additional ones also at 50% off. So thank you for your time here. And now I would like to introduce our next guest um, who is quite an expert in the areas of sales and service, Don Farrell. Meredith, thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate it. And we're going to continue Meredith's theme of training. And as she mentioned, we're going to focus on sales. How do we increase your revenues? First and foremost, let's talk about a quick frame of reference because I am new to the pharmacy world. Um, we think we can bring fresh ideas, tactics, skills that can impact sales and service. Uh, I go back to the days when I started in the hospitality world. I started with Marriott Hotels. Tony mentioned them earlier. Uh, it, is, it was the company and still is a good company to work for. I started as a pot scrubber at age 15, worked my way up through all the ranks that, uh, that exist in a hotel, throughout the kitchen, bars, uh, different areas of the hotel. And I wound up in the sales office where I first found my first passion. And the cool thing about hospitality, and the reason I'm mentioning this is when you're selling hotel rooms, you're selling time and you're selling space. And once it's gone, it's gone forever. 
that forced us to figure out how to sell smarter, sell better, and, and have a sense of urgency as to, as to closing the deal in a very positive way. So with that kind of experience, we brought these techniques and tactics and strategies to other different market segments. In 1986, for example, I started the largest training company in the world. We had well over 10,000 clients. We had licensees in 44 different countries. We're training sales and service all over the world. And in 2007, I sold that big company to start the best company, which is called Fresh Revenues. Our client list today, as an example, is the U.S. Navy, where we train 84, well, it's up to 86 now, 86 different naval bases all over the world. Uh, we train hospitals. We train convention centers. We even train a guy that owns 300 gas stations. And every one of these clients wants hospitality-type training. How do we have greater levels of service? How do we increase our sales? And we're able to do that in these industries. We'd like to do it in your industry, and we've got an offer at the end to try to prove that. All right? Now, let's get right into it. We want to generate more sales. I'm going to give you some tips, and we're going to focus initially on outside selling. If you wouldn't mind, there are 36 different pharmacies on the line right now. Type in a number of the number of outside salespeople you have making sales calls. Zero obviously mean, means you don't have any, and then type the number of persons that are actually out making sales calls, please. If you wouldn't mind, do that in the chat box, okay? All right. Let's talk about outside selling for just a second. I'm gonna play with you a little bit and we're gonna talk about ROI, return on investment. Here's some assumptions, ready? I know for a fact that uh, an organized and well-trained salesperson make about 10 personal calls a day. Qualified, quantified, substance was obtained, 10 calls a day, personal calls, okay? Outside of the office, outside of the, out of the pharmacy. Let's just say our salesperson, your salesperson's only making five. Five a day times five days a week times 48 weeks a year totals about 1,200 sales calls made over the course of a calendar year. Let's just say for the sake of an argument, again, this is an assumption, 40% of those 1,200 actually send business your way. That's 480 different uh, sources. And let's just, again, assume for a second they send you 20 different customers over the course of a year. 480 times 20 times an average transaction price of let's just say $20. Now let's stop there for a second. I read cover to cover the NCPA 2016 Digest. That's the National Community Pharmacists Association. They've been doing this for 80 years and they come up with all the different metrics and all the different averages for pharmacies across the country. And what they say is the average transaction in 2016 totaled $56.37. I'm going in at $20. Let's just say it's $20. I think I'm low. If you take those 480 calls times 20 different clients obtained over the course of a year times $20 on the average transaction, that's an incremental increase in your revenues of $192,000. So if you want to make $192,000 more than what you're making right now, you may want to look at having outside salespeople. All right. So how do we train these people? What do we train them to do? Ready? Outside salespeople, we, have, we show them where and who to call on. Uh, doctors, nursing homes, assisted living, nurse practitioners, chambers of commerce, economic development. Here's one I'll spend a little bit more time on. Large homeowner associations. So if I owned a pharmacy on the east side of town and I want to grow my business outside of my normal geographic area, how do I, how do I attract the people on the west side that have other pharmacies they're visiting that they develop loyalties from and with? How do I attract those people to come all the way east to do business with me? Well, maybe if I made a presentation to the different uh, communities, the larger communities that have homeowner associations, many do. Uh, I happen to live in a building that has a homeowner association in the building. So if we can make presentations to those folks with attractive offers, maybe it would be enough to convince them to travel to your side of town. Again, growing incremental business. So that's just one of many ways and different areas that we would, we would approach and show your people how to make this kind of a sales call. Number two, how to make a superior sales call. Um, there's a process, and if you're writing stuff down, you may wanna start writing now, ready, if you haven't already. First and foremost, the salesperson would do their homework. They know who they're calling on, what they do for a, bit, for a living. Uh, they've got some tips and, and things they've seen online that uh, are, are milestones for the company you're calling on. Create the sense that you've done your homework on this client. You just didn't show up cold turkey, okay? So you've done your homework. Secondly, 
you'd want to introduce yourself the right way. And I'm going to spend more time on the personality part of it all. But right now is where you adjust your personality to partner that of the person you're talking to. Okay. Personality partnering, I'm going to spend more time on it just a bit. But number three, client needs. All right. So let's find out what the client needs. And here's where salespeople really fall down. They don't spend enough time on identifying the needs and the different pain points of the potential client, the potential customer. Spend time here, spend more time here than you spend on anything else in this entire sales call process. Now that when you've got all their needs on the table, you start talking about the benefits of your pharmacy. Why would it make sense for you to come all the way over to my store to do business with us? Here's what we think we do well. So you're talking about the benefits, the value proposition, if you would say, okay? Now, fifth item, you give them options on pricing, okay? So if there's different ways to buy your product and your services, then, they'll, then you'll be able to present that to them at this point, all right? Number six, trial close. The greatest fear most outside salespeople have, even inside salespeople, is the fact that they're gonna be rejected. The person's gonna say, no, I won't know what to say. We're gonna show them how to, how to get through that. In fact, we're gonna show them how to get fewer denials and fewer objections if they go with what's called a trial close. We're able to stick your toe in the water to find out how you're doing with the sales call before you, number seven, ask for the order. So those are seven things that ought to be happening on every single sales call. We can train your people on how to do that, all right? Um, in all these, all these different uh, market segments that I mentioned earlier that we work with, the truth of the matter is the salespeople are not bad salespeople. They're mediocre. They, they blend in with the rest of them. What the, the problem is they don't, they don't rise to the top. The cream doesn't rise to the top. And they're not making a superior sales call. They're making one as good as the competition. We can show you how to distance yourself from the competition. All right? All right, let's talk a little bit more about personality partnering, which was on the previous slide. Talking to people in the right tone is more important than the actual words you use. Think about it. Words are important. But how you say stuff is what people are going to remember. Personality partnering and understanding the different personalities of the person you're talking to. And it comes down to four big categories. Um, Meredith mentioned uh, emotional intelligence. That's what this is. It, it shows you and it trains you on how to approach people with the right tone and say the right things the right way. That's more important than the words. So we've got to teach your people how to do that. And by the way, you as leaders in these pharmacies, this is a great leadership quality you need to have. You have eight different employees. You have eight associates. They're all different personality styles. What style is more suited to them, which would motivate them to, be, to do what you want them to do? Okay? So personality partnering. All right. Next, how to, stay, how to follow up and stay remembered. I mean, it, it's not a simple email that says, hey, look, uh, have, you, have you decided to use our business? There are creative ways to follow up that, that make you memorable, and I think we can show your people how to do that. Lastly here, or two more things, sorry. Systems for staying organized. We think we can show your people how to, either through a software solution or even a mechanical one, simple systems on how to set up trace files and main files and geographic files so that they're a lot more efficient and they're maximizing their productivity. And lastly, we're gonna show them how to, how to network with groups, associations, and clubs stuff that's worth participating in, all right? I wanna spend just a bit on inside sales for just a second here. I get to speak at a lot of different conferences and some are as large as 10,000, some are as small as 10, and everything in between. And I'll ask every single audience, uh, the name of the game for your business, your industry is to satisfy your clients, satisfy your customers, satisfy your consumers, is that correct? And 99.999% of the people agree Satisfaction is the name of the game. And we're here to tell you that satisfaction is not the name of the game. Satisfying your customer is giving them what they expect. If you deliver at least one more thing that they didn't expect, you're now driving an L word, loyalty. And three things happen when your consumer, your customer is loyal. Number one, they will drive to the east, part of, east side of town versus the west and only do business with you. They don't care if there's a cheaper deal somewhere else. They don't care if there's someplace closer to them. They'll do business with you because they're loyal to you. Number two, they're going to tell friends and family. I don't care how much money you have in marketing. It's never enough. And this is the best form of marketing for you. These third-party testimonials where they're convincing their friends and family to send business your way. 
So when they're loyal, that happens. And the third item is if something bad were to happen, for example, they show up and they expected to be in and out in 10 minutes and it took 25 minutes because you were backed up, they're not going to have a heart attack. They're not going to say, hey, listen, I'm not loyal to this person. They're much more forgiving. That's the key right there. They're more forgiving when they're loyal. All right. So the goal is for everybody that walks through your door, everybody that calls up on your telephone, everybody that hits your website is to develop loyalty, not satisfaction. And the way to get there is with, with plus ones. We've uh, trademarked this and we have put together processes and programs on working with people either through distance learning or face-to-face -face, where we can develop lists and techniques and tactics on developing one more thing, two more things, five more things. If somebody requests, for example, where's the aspirin? Something as simple as that. How can we exceed their expectation, these plus ones? And then in the fixing area, something's not right. We did something wrong. How do we deliver more than they expect in the fixes? So a very, very tactical session a lot of breakout stuff, a lot of brainstorming as to what can we do. And in most cases, it doesn't cost you any more money or very little money to offer these plus ones, okay? All right, so there are two ways to buy our business, our, our, our kind of business that we, we train. And the first is face-to-face -face training, on-site training. We actually fly to your location and we can train one store or we can train a multiple of stores. In these sessions, we do 24 people maximum to be able to maximize the ability for everybody to learn. If it's any more than that, it, it, uh, it diminishes your return. So we've limited, limited to 24 people. So let's just say six stores send four people. That's 24 people in a training event that you can, you can split the cost with. We would spend an entire day showing you how to sell and service at a higher level, okay? Uh, this is the first time we're doing this. So we're offering a $2,100 daily rate uh, plus the cost of travel to you uh, if you take us up on this offer. And the offer has to be delivered before March 1st of 2018. That's the only thing I ask, please. The second way to buy us is through a web session, a, an actual live web classroom, where we would charge you $1,200 total, and it would be a two-hour session because that's about all people can stand when they're doing uh, web sessions with us. Uh, but this $1,200, but they would be chock full of stuff, sales, service, culture building, leadership, okay? So there you have it from Fresh Revenues. Uh, I believe I'm gonna turn it back over to Tony, is that correct? And Don and Doug, thank you so much again for doing this. Yes, Don, thank you. Great job, great job. Dan and Doug, are you out there? Are you gonna be joining me? We are, how you doing? Hi, sir. You're, out, you're in cyber world. By the <laughs> way, you're in the, what, outside the suburbs of Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, yes sir. So we've had very, very good retention, patience. People have been sitting here now for 57 minutes, all 36 of them. We gained people since the beginning. So go ahead and take over and show us uh, what you're going to be doing. Excellent. Um, we definitely wanted to, one, say thank you so much for everyone uh, showing up and uh, sticking, sticking around for it. We really appreciate your time. And, again, we understand time is money, so we do appreciate it. And that's why we figured this was worth it because it's, it's definitely giving you some good information to help you with – you know, your profits. Um, we also wanted to let you know that you are more than welcome to ask any question that you want. Um, go ahead and, um, you know, list the questions you want through the chat. And don't forget about the special offers. Reach out to all of us. You can email us. You can call us. Whatever is easiest for you. Definitely check us out on the LinkedIn because, again, we do uh, post things on LinkedIn all the time. Um, but I want to say thank you so much for showing up and we will definitely address any uh, questions that you may have. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate everybody showing up and taking the time to uh, listen to us today. Thank you. I'm not sure what exactly happened right there, but we now have <laughs> all of us on the screen. And just for everybody out in the internet world, on your computer, you should have had another window just open. And if you search for that, that's going to be where you'll see the special offers. And if you did not have a window open, if you look up at the top of the chat box, you see there is a URL. Just click on that and you'll be able to see the special offers. Keep in mind, they're going to be available for 60, 72 hours. But the, as I'll call them freebies, here's what I suggest. Go to rxoneshop.com, go to the resource page, 
just click on the research button. You'll see all of us there. Click on my button that says schedule a demo or buy or whatever. Let us know and we will give you the freebie, which is in my case, $595. It's a uh, the website, two free assessments, and we will train you on how to use them. And then you can use our ongoing service. Keep in mind, the sales that all of us providing you are only for 72 hours. You know how it is. You got to get things done. And if you can make 50 cents on the dollar, keep the money in the bank. And none of the services I provide expire. And you can buy, if you have multiple stores, like a lot of our customers do, you can buy additional assessments for like 30% off. Either way, it's up to you. And now, if Meredith, would you like to add something? Sure. I was just going to refresh their uh, my, rem remind them about the offer that we've got available, which is a free dashboard for Strong for Performance that includes a subscription for the administrator. And I will reach out to all the attendees or, as you mentioned, Tony, they can go to the rxoneshop.com, which uh, I think Doug and Dan just put in the chat box and go to the resources tab and then they'll have links um, to contact us, but the uh, the special offer with the discounts on the starter package are also on the offer page at the top of chat. And so we just welcome your uh, questions. If you need more information, just contact us. Well, let me also point out, I apologize, you will be getting an email from all of us and it will also give you a copy of this recording where we'll record the webinar. Feel free to share it with all your pharmacy friends throughout the world. And they, anybody that you send that to will honor the same offer. Be a big shot for Christmas, Thanksgiving. Give them a gift. <laughs> Eric, what do you have to say, my friend? Uh, right now, uh, if anybody has any questions related to uh, marketing, go ahead and type those in. I'll tell you the most common question that I hear these days, and, and a lot of this is generated by the media, is, um, is related to Twitter because... You know, as you saw, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, those are the biggest social media networks out there. But Twitter is what the president uses to communicate, and the media has picked up on that. So people wonder, should I be using Twitter? Is it something that I need to use? And Twitter is sort of a different animal. And the reason for that is because when you tweet something out, first, you've got to have a pretty good sized audience to pay attention to you. So it takes time to build up an audience in order to be relevant. And then when you do tweet something out, you've got to remember that it probably has a shelf life of about 45 seconds. So tweets, and especially if you have, uh, I've got a, a little over 2,000 um, people that follow me on Twitter. And when I'm looking at my feed, it's just things are constantly moving. There are people posting all the time. So for anything to, to stay for very long, it just doesn't happen. So if you do something and you're a local business, it's more difficult to be impactful on Twitter. You really have to be tweeting 20 or 30 times a day and build up a strong local following to have any sort of, of real impact. So is Twitter good for local businesses? There are exceptions to that, but generally speaking, you're probably gonna have a better shot using uh, Facebook or Instagram or even YouTube if you wanna communicate with the people that you'd like to do business with. I'd like to um, answer a quick question that I that I did receive um, earlier. They were asking if we were able to ship to all 50 states, and yes, we are licensed to ship at all 50 states. So I just want to let you know that. Yeah, Mr. Farrell, I want to spend a little bit of, of like a minute here. At most uh, seven respondents gave me the number of salespeople they had, and of the seven, three have a sales staff. One has ten. Uh, several have two. And I just wanted to share this, whatever industry, whatever business we work in, I'll ask an owner or an operator, how many salespeople do you have? And they'll say zero, one, or two. And the truth of the matter is if they have 10 employees, they ought to have 10 salespeople. And it's easy to say, and it's another thing to actually have it uh, work in practice. So I would encourage anybody who's listening to this thing that every single person working for you is in sales. The challenge is, they either don't like it, they don't like salespeople because they haven't seen a good experience. We can show them how to do that, all right? And I can vouch for Don. I've known Don since the early 90s, and uh, when I ran a hotel company, we had 100 and some odd hotels. They did a marvelous job, and then they did it for the franchise of over 5,000 hotels. 
the guy the guy delivers. If not, I'll give him a little punch in the nose. <laughs> Any question? I see a question about hiring people. Someone's asking, you know, seems like people have a tendency, I've read or something about people lying on resumes and all that. Absolutely right. You know, humans have one ability that no one else in the world, mammals have, we have the ability to lie. And so therefore, uh, I, I suspect virtually all of you do drug testing. Can you imagine? I can't imagine you give someone say, here's a cup, bring it back tomorrow, we'll test you for drugs. No freaking way. As far as the assessment world, we have the highest quality control in the world. You have to be when you do Major League Baseball for 49 years. The top second draft choices take the Winslow assessment, the athletic assessment, should say. And we can tell if someone's biased in the results. If they do, we don't put your report out. Everybody else does. We actually have them take it over again. No different if you had a bad drug test. You wouldn't say, well, we'll just accept the results and we'll assume you don't. Absolutely. We, we, we work for you and we help you make money. And if you want to get a, a testimonial, uh, message uh, Don Grove. I guarantee you, he would tell you that that the, the people you see on the screens here, all of them provide a phenomenal service that make them money. Meredith, do you have anything else? Questions? Uh, you know, I had gotten one earlier that I could go ahead and address here, which is what makes our system different from other e-learning programs that are out there. And I would say the key, a key thing is the fact that it is not trying to just build up knowledge. We're not trying to fill people's heads with information and then give them knowledge tests. It's very much oriented to, you know, getting a specific tip that can be helpful and then going out and using it and practicing it over and over until they get really good at it. But then also this component of getting them to think about what happened and go through those questions to process that combined with being able to work with a coach who's going to guide them along the way and provide them with support so they don't get discouraged and they don't revert back to the old way of doing things. So, and people get 24 seven access for a full year. So they get to practice all kinds of different skills during that time. Let me put in a plug for Doug and the Yankee, you don't mind. Uh, when they mentioned earlier, they're gonna host us. They're very, very kind and we appreciate Doug and Dan, the double Ds as I like to call them, D and D, is that they're, all of us have agreed that they're gonna be doing educational webinars about 30 minutes. Each one of us is gonna do that. So look out for emails from Doug and her posts and we'll be assigning the dates for that. And each one of us will be separately doing that for, for Doug and Dan's clients. And also we do have a live boot camp coming up in January 18th and 19th in Warsaw, Missouri. By the way, join us. Doug and Dan are buying lunch for anybody that shows up. And, uh, and, and on top of that, if you're an RX shop member, you get a hundred dollar off coupon. Not bad. And, and I don't know if you saw the Ray Kroc movie lately about McDonald's. We have a special guest uh, speaker. He will tell you how the Happy Meal came to be, the backstory. Be there and they buy you lunch. Any other questions? We got one there, Mike. Your mic is not working. That's Paul. <laughs> so. Uh, there, now it is. Oh, no. There. <laughs> well, you know, you guys should have it's great when it works, but when it don't, it's a bitch. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, we, we just, we really appreciate everyone, including um, you expert speakers as well. You guys definitely, it was, it was great to do. I'm glad we did it. Um, any service we can offer for our members, we'd love to do and bringing you, you four aboard and having, you know, speak about what you do and how you can help them definitely helps out everyone. We want to help out the pharmacies as much as possible. That's our goal. So we appreciate what your time that you took as well. Well, thank you. Thank you. I think at this point, there is one question I think, I don't know if Doug or Dan, you want to address it. It looks like Patrice. She says, I wish someone or a group would come together to help us stand up and take back our profession. So... We 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 agree with that, uh, Patrice, um, wholeheartedly. That's again, we have lots of friends and family members in the industry. We we know what you're going through right now. 
Uh, we we bust our butts every day. We're negotiating pricing, trying to drop that price down, trying to get you better pricing, trying to make it so you can get a product and actually get even even on reimbursements. Um, so we're we're every day we're trying to fight that battle for you to try to bring more aggressive pricing. I'll tell you this: the more people you tell within the industry about RX One Shop, the more pharmacies that come to RX One Shop and help us grow, the bigger we become. The bigger we become, the more buying power we have. The more buying power we have, the better pricing I'm going to get. I'm going to pass it to you. That's our goal. And one thing to mention too, uh, obviously with the big suppliers out there, the McKesson's, the Cardinals, um, Amerisource, they, they like to tie you in to having to buy so many products and things from them. Just make sure you read the fine print on those because you can go outside of those more than you think. And if you go outside of them as much as possible to suppliers like us, you'll save a lot more. Yes. Here's another thing I would tell you. I, I, I'm 64 years old, so I've been around probably a lot longer than anybody but Merit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I see the pension swinging back. I think the Internet has changed. In the 60s and 70s when I was young, it was a local business, kind of like a local pharmacy. And God, you better take care of your customer or you'd be out of business. Then the big, everybody consolidated, the Walmarts, the Targets. Everybody kept buying and buying. You know why? I went to Wall Street. I took it coming. Because you got to continue to grow every quarter. It's the only way you get value. The Internet has changed it. I'm telling you, look what happened United Airlines. You guys have the power. Social media. Training your employees, it's more critical. One customer who gets mad at the service you give them, they can put you out of business. But you also have the power. You can reach people around the world. You need to start taking advantage of that. We are here absolutely to help you. We will make you money. We will make you happier. And if you don't, fire us. <laughs> I agree. Again, thank you so much to everybody that showed up, and we really do appreciate it, and we're here to help. Check us out. Go to our website. Email us. Whatever we can do, we will do it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.